Go, rebound taken by Iguodala. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining! There are certain moments that, as a fan, you just know you're going to remember. This is a big reason as to why I think people watch and love sports so much. When the right mixture of players, circumstances, and timing all come together, it can create something truly special. In mid-2016, climbing was still looking for its moment. The sport had had some incredible achievements, sure, but its individual and outdoor nature, along with the ongoing development of the competition scene, meant that there hadn't been any truly iconic moments on the scale of other professional leagues. At the same time, a shift was starting to happen within the sport. The old guard who had carried much of climbing's fame through the 2000s were nearing the twilight stages of their career, and a slew of insanely strong young talent were coming up, determined to bring climbing into a new type of limelight. Leading them was one climber in particular who was just about ready to take on the torch as the best in the world. On September 18th, 2016, these two things came together at the World Cup in Paris, France. With climbing recently confirmed as an Olympic sport, its popularity was growing and this was a massive event. There were some great moments and some fun outcomes, but in the end, it all came down to the men's lead final when Adam Andra stepped up and gave rock climbing the moment that it had been waiting for. Today, I thought it would be fun to look back and relive this competition. The routes, the stakes, the climbing, and how, in the end, it all came down to Adam Andra alone on the wall with one move between him and climbing's greatest competition moment. Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the 2016 Paris League World Cup, which led to what has to be the best competition climbing moment of all time. If you want to support this channel, get early access to videos like this and some exclusive content, maybe consider checking out my Patreon via the link in the description. Paris was a massive event in the sport climbing world. Like I said, climbing had recently been confirmed as an Olympic sport, and this was one of the early events that included a combined format. Olympic climbing was still a little new though, and many of the big names didn't take part in the combined format. This meant that bouldering and lead were the main attractions of the weekend, and because it was scheduled last, the men's lead competition was the crowning jewel of the event. This was a stacked competition. You had all-around medal leader Jakob Schubert, outdoor specialist Stefano Gisolfi, and competition staple Sean McCall. Star of the show, though, was far and away Adam Andra. In 2016, Andra was already a household name within the climbing community. His ascent of la dura dura and change had catapulted him into the conversation as the best climber in the world, and he had recently proven that he was a force on the competition scene as well, becoming the first person to ever win both the Boulder and Lead world titles in the same year in 2014. His best moment, though, was yet to come. Kichiro Karanaga kicked things off in the lead finals. Now, there was a lot of emphasis put on route setting for this competition, and I have to say, they absolutely nailed it. The route was designed as bouldery, exciting, and minimalist. There were fewer than 10 actual footholds on the entire wall, a decision that was intended to encourage creative 3D climbing. After this tough lower section and an exciting dyno, there is a series of hard compression moves on the prow, followed by the crux a brutal, technical, thumb-pressy sequence ending in another throw for a good hold. The vision of the route setters was clear. They wanted an increasingly difficult climb that spit off all but the best, ending with the winner of the competition punching through the crux, making this dyno and topping the route out in spectacular fashion. Kichiro started things off in style, nailing this first dyno and then monkey barring his way through the next couple of moves, and it immediately became clear that we were in for a killer finals. Koronaga cranked through the overhung section before getting a little wild at the top and falling before he could make it off the prow. Next up was Stefano Gisolfi. 
Here, I just want to mention how fun it was to have Adam Pustelnik, the route setter, commentating this climb. He was so invested in the climbers and so passionate about the route and it really added a layer of fun to the whole thing and you can hear how upset he is when Stefano falls. The event went on with an unfortunate slip from Ramone Julien Puyblanque and a great performance from Sean McCall to set a new high point. This route was basically tailor-made for McCall to thrive on and he pulled some pretty fun beta on the way to claiming top spot. It didn't last long though as Roman de Grand set a new high point in front of a hometown crowd. Already this route was delivering perfectly. Each new climber was inching a move or two above the climber before them with no stopper moves or really easy sections in sight. Jakob Schubert continued the trend using some beautiful climbing to get up onto the headwall before he leaned a little too far outwards on the thumb press and popped off. Gatier Super wasn't quite able to beat his high point, but he put up a great fight in front of his hometown crowd that ended in this massive whip. When Domin Skofic came off before he could make it to the headwall, Jakob was in first place with only one climber left. Gold was in sight, but that's never really a safe place to be when the remaining climber is Adam Andra. So with seven climbers having tried and seven climbers having failed, Adam Andra stepped out in front of more than 7,000 fans to take his crack at the Paris 2016 lead wall. The stakes were simple. He needed to make it past Jakob's high point to lock up the gold medal and cement himself as the 2016 world lead title holder. Now, because of count back, Adam technically only needed to attempt the 43rd move to secure his place at the top of the podium, but this is Adam Andra on the World Cup stage. He wanted a top, the announcers wanted a top, everyone in the arena wanted a top, and he was not about to disappoint. From the start, Andra looked incredibly comfortable. This route is almost perfectly in his style. Bouldery, overhung, and long, with punchy sequences separated by decent rests, it was built for him to thrive on and he was taking advantage of it. It's really fun to watch a younger version of Adam on the comp scene. You can see that he doesn't have quite the same fluidity and speed to his on-site climbing that current Andre does, but the talent is undeniable. Look at this drop knee and then the high heel to cushion the pumpiness of these compression moves before he exited the prow and found a really good rest on this high right foot. He made this really tough clip before firing into the crux. Now look at the tiny adjustment that he makes to bring his left foot out on the volume, creating space for him to lean in and make the thumb press stick. This is what differentiates him from Jakob. He then shuffles over, brings the other hand up and moves into the penultimate position. So after two straight days of competition, Paris 2016 had boiled down to this. Adam Andra, 15 meters above the ground, one move away from being able to top the route and give this competition the perfect finish. What do you think he does? World champion. Come yes. on, Adam Andra. Look at the concentration on those tiny crimps. Just got to jump for the jug, come on. Oh, sticks it, Adam Andra. <laughs> and that's exactly what the route setters and visitors said. If we get someone onto that jug, that's exactly what we want them to do. Adam knows he's going to win back-to-back -back lead world championships. He is the greatest climber of all time. And that was that. Adam Andra stuck the dyno, punched through the last two moves, and topped off the route to cap off the 2016 Paris World Cup. It's hard to imagine a more storybook finish than this. You had Adam showing some insane strength on these tiny holds, the wild jump to the jug, and him riling up the crowd once he knew he had won. It was the perfect ending to the perfect competition, and to me, it remains the greatest moment in climbing competition history. Weirdly enough though, my favorite part of this moment wasn't even the climbing. It was the excitement in Charlie's and Mike's voices as they watched it happen. With how high the stakes were and how perfect the moment was, you can basically hear them go from announcers to fans as Andre throws for the hold. For just a second, they seemed to forget that they were on the job. That's how absorbed they were in this climb. 
It was the completely genuine thrill of two people who love the sport, watching a historic moment unfold in front of them, and it represented to me just how powerful moments can be. Alright guys, that's everything for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider checking out the other retrospectives that I've done. If you want to support the channel more, you can leave a comment below or go to my Patreon to see some exclusive content and Olympic analysis. Thank you so much as always for watching, and I will see you next time.